So first and foremost, uh, I do want to share, I have given you an additional day for your assignment. So I saw, um, how strong um, some of the work was that I was getting. And I realized some of you are working relatively hard, some of you harder than others, some not as hard. Uh, so I did want to give one additional day. Uh, I know we're not meeting tomorrow on Wednesday. Um, but at the same time, uh, Thursday would give us one more day for critique and as would Friday. So Friday, May 8th, 11.59 p.m. is your new due date. Okay, so the new due date will be May 8th, that's Friday, one additional day, 11.59 uh, p.m. So you have Thursday all class and Friday all class to get out any final questions or thoughts. Okay, so um, any questions on that? So you guys all got that new due date down. That's great. <clears throat> um, I do want to discuss, do you guys think May 8th is a fair date? based on what you guys have done and accomplished and how the work is going, do you guys think Friday is a good date? I mean, we extended a couple times, but I just want to make sure you guys are comfortable. I know some students are overworked. Okay, um, so that leads me to, uh, we're gonna quickly run through today uh, your assignment because I do wanna talk to you guys about something else um, that was brought to my attention yesterday. Uh, I'll address that uh, momentarily. Um, is there any pressing questions that you guys have now? Yesterday was a relatively fast class. We went through um, William's balance sheet. We went through Frida's presentation right? That she's still working on. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to run by me that you're working on, but you're not sure how it's going? Yeah, speak. You guys have access to talk. Um, so I was doing the last final parts of my bal balance sheet for uh, both of my companies. And then I found like an error. It was not my error. It was like the company's error. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I found that Yahoo Finance had a much more accurate number than Samsung's actual balance sheet. So I decided to use their, um, their uh, information instead. Is that okay? Because they kind of, Samsung basically kind of missed $6 billion worth. There's, of uh, this is the, like, it's so crazy because once you start converting currencies, it does get difficult. I think a few of you had numbers that were off once you started converting the currencies, which is strange. Oh, but oh, oh no, it was not converted. It was just US dollars. And the Samsung balance sheet was not balanced, but on Yahoo Finance it was? Yeah, for some <laughs> reason, because it didn't, it didn't add up to their current assets. Okay. So... Um, when assets, I saw the assets, the liabilities and stockholders equity. Uh, no, just their non-current assets. Their like intangible assets were very different from their, okay. uh, the one. So that will happen. here's my question. And, and Mary definitely, definitely understandable. Does your, all I'm worried about, and here's what I'm going to tell you guys today. So William, William's here, right? William, can yeah. you, 
can you get on your, you can see my screen, right? Can you guys, yeah. William, can you go on your document? I'm going to have William do this for me. Okay. So if you look at William's document, which I have right here, this is what I'm going to recommend. You can all do. I'm only saying this now because I wanted you to find the errors. If there were errors, I wanted you to pinpoint, um, what could you do to fix this? Right. Or reach out to me individually. So Mary, Mary said it was weird. Yes. I spoke with Mary. Yes. I would like Mary to let me know if her balance sheet is still jacked up. Right. Don't just submit me a balance sheet that doesn't balance. Like Emery contacted me, Serena, a few students about that. Their balance sheet still wasn't making sense. So here's what I would want. And I'll say it now. Still jacked. Okay, good. If your balance sheet is still jacked, what I need you to do, William, is do this for me. Can you make an additional line under row 30? Make a blank one under row 30. All right. I want you to call it other liabilities. Okay, now, uh, can you make the text on that red? This one or at the top one? Uh, no, just uh, just the uh, the other oh, okay. liabilities right. that we just made. Okay. Okay, do the same thing under um, non-current assets. Do the same thing under non-current assets. Make another one just like that. Now, Mary, do you know how much your balance sheet is off by? So if you guys know, how much your balance sheet is off by. I am going to allow you to put the difference in and just put a question mark here, William, for other assets in the dollar side, just put a question mark there. Okay. I'm going to allow you to put the difference in here, whether it's liabilities or ass <clears throat> assets, find the difference, put it in there. In the real world, there's no way in hell you can do this, right? That would be blasphemous. You would get arrested. For this assignment, in the real world, if you were there working for Apple or whatever companies you have, you would have access to all of their data, all of their numbers. You would be balanced. Your job would be to balance it. Since you're working off documents that may or may not be accurate, because they're not sending it to you directly, your balance sheets may still not balance. Does that make sense? I still want you to balance it, right? I still want you to balance it. So what I need you guys to do is find out what it's off by and put it in other liabilities or other assets. That way your numbers balance from total assets equals total liabilities and shareholder equity. Does that make sense? Go ahead. Um, and also when you told us about if you couldn't find like the, if you couldn't find the, well, they have the accumulated depreciation. You couldn't find like the gross. It's okay to put it in red to like illegally fake the you know, number. Well, that's what the other assets and other liabilities are. You're yeah, going to yeah. put in the number that balances. You're going to put the rest of the number in that balances your balance sheet. That's what I want. I want you to put the rest of it that will balance your balance sheet. Okay. Okay. Um, that's important because I understand that we are not really getting the information 
from the direct accounting teams. So if that's the case, then we definitely need to find out what it's off by and then just put what it's off by here in red. That way your balance sheet still balances. If you do that for me, I think we're okay. All right. Okay. Um, that would solve your balance sheet issues. I think you guys have spent enough time troubleshooting. Um, since you've spent enough time troubleshooting, there's your fix. I'm going to allow you guys to do that. There's your fix. Uh, sorry, one more question. Okay, go ahead. Um, after what everything's said and done and we have to put everything on a PowerPoint, right? You said to use graphics, pie chart, or tables or whatever it's for um, our presentation, basically to make it professional. Right. Um, how would we go about doing number six? Should we post the financials or just put it in a diagram? For number six? Yeah, if we put it in a PowerPoint. So num number six is all about your balance sheet. Number six, you really don't need additional charts and graphs. You oh, okay. are, you have the chart. The chart is the balance sheet. Okay. So your, your number six is all about the balance sheet. Now you could do what Frida did where she actually gave originally, she gave you like um, this, that they're going to be 60% debt, 40% cash in order to make that purchase. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely I can do that, but um, I don't have to put it in the PowerPoint or. I mean, it depends on how thorough you want your PowerPoint, your presentation. Okay. Okay. So if when you're talking about the balance sheet, which is here, if you want to add certain ideas to it, then you can create little graphics like this uh, or find them online um, or find other information or maybe you know, you just do what's here. You have the balance sheet and you give your three pieces of the analysis. Mm. All right. right. So Frida's focus was the working capital they have, uh, their current uh, debt ratio, I believe, uh, debt to equity ratio here, and their financial current ratio is here to give you their financial health of the company after the acquisition. And that's your little mm -hmm. analysis. You don't need any additional pie charts or graphs for the balance sheet. If you do, you can add the stock price like she did. If they're doing an equity and piece, you can have a, a stock price for the stock part for investors. Um, you can do the debt or equity little, you know, thing that she has here that says how much is what piece. But no, you, you don't necessarily need additional um, charts or graphs, but you need additional information, right? So, um, the debt, like what's the percentage of the debt? Is it a loan or you're selling bonds, right? So those are things that you have to anticipate researching also. All right. All right. But no, you don't have to just, don't give me graphs for the sake of giving me graphs. Cause that's just extra busy work. All right. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Tasneem Shushin, Prasanga, anything else uh, tweaking your brain right now? Um, I think you already addressed this, but you can use different time frames, right, for the balance sheet. Because for um, I, I use the latest uh, one for Apple, which apparently is not available for the other company. So can I use the previous one? Um, which date is that? Uh, Apple is from March, with the first, uh, first quarter of 2020 and the other one will be the last quarter of 2019. Yeah, you can do that. Oh. That's fine. Yeah. You can use the most recent one for one of them and then the December one for the other. That's okay with me. Just make sure the date is there. So like when you do the balance sheet, just make sure you have the date, 
like we have here of which balance sheet is which. Okay. That way we know which numbers we are adding um, together. Okay, uh, anybody else? All right. Um, again, I'm extending it to Friday. Okay. So you guys don't have to worry too much about um, you know, you get that additional day. Uh, we're not going to have class tomorrow. We'll have class Thursday and Friday. We'll do a critique Thursday. Again, if you guys have more questions before you <clears throat> finally do present it. Um, and then Friday, uh, we'll see. I, I have something else planned that I'm working on. Okay. Uh, Ham, haven't really heard from you. Uh, Ham, you got any questions? How are you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you? Um, I'm well, as good as can be expected, locked in my basement. Um, do you guys have any um, concerns with uh, anything regarding anything outside the balance sheet? Any ideas that you want to run by? Maybe not. All right. Um, okay, so that leads me <clears throat> um, to we're sure. Just before I close down William's balance sheet and I'm closing Frida's assignment also. All right. Um, Friday, we will start discussing a little bit of the presentation part. The presentation, you'll probably get two weeks to do. You'll have one week to do the script and then you'll have one week to memorize it and do the video. So that would be the two weeks from Friday. All right, so you'll have a week to write the script based on the presentation and a week to do um, the actual video recording. What do you guys think of that time frame? So if we pull up a calendar, we're looking at the 15th will be the script is due, the 22nd will be when your video is due. Anybody have, does anybody need, I don't know your other classes or other class rosters and schedules. <clears throat> so I don't know other things that are impacting you. Um, you're going to have to be the, the ones that bear that news to me. So is there anything else that you guys need in terms of time for that? Nothing, nada. Okay, so um, if you guys got nothing else, uh, the last thing I wanna do uh, is discuss with you guys a little bit about what's happening um, in education and then larger scale uh, what, what is happening in terms of, you know, whether it's college next year, whether it's your grades this year, um, or concerns you guys might have. Uh, I, I was reached out to yesterday by some students in VE that feel they have been overworked. Uh, so I wanted to get your take just on the deadlines that you have had, right? And I want to get your take on um, just your workload from other classes and how that balancing act is going. Uh, does anybody want to share? Anybody willing to share? Amar, Darren. Yeah, Ethan, go ahead. So with all the intertwining classes in between this class as well, um, it's more like those due dates like stack on onto each other. So 
for example, the due date was Thursday for this project, but um, so was other things in other classes, but thankfully you changed it to uh, Friday. Now it makes it more easier for that extra day for me to do more work. Um, so the due date, the due date was more, actually May 1st. The due date was actually like May 1st or April 30th. Yeah, Monday, May. right? Right. All right, go ahead, continue. So, yeah, when uh, they just keep stacking for a coincidental reason, that's why I've, I've been having like a little bit of trouble trying to keep up or do all of them at once. But then I finally had a plan to juggle all those tasks. So, okay. Um, uh, Tasneem says, I had a presentation today and then AP Lit took a lot of time because of essay practices. Okay. Um, so Tasneem, on a scale of one to 10, what would you say your stress level is based on schoolwork? Three to four, that's light work. That's not bad at all then. Uh, is anybody facing like a 10 where like you have no idea how you're gonna get all of the stuff done that is required of you and that this is out of control and the world's falling apart and that the walls are closing in? Ethan's a seven. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of time. So workload uh, often can be manageable. Um, okay. Serena, Prasanga, what about you guys? Mary, what are your guys' thoughts? I assume you're getting more work than you were getting while we were in school. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. I mean, even this. The mergers and acquisition project was supposed to take one week and we were supposed to do it in class, right? In class. Um, so it just becomes homework because you just can't do that because you're not there anymore. Um, okay. If and when your assignments, like Ethan said, start to stack up, I need to be communicated with. I don't mind being flexible. I don't want to be abused. Right? I don't want to give you time if you don't need time, but I also don't want you guys killing yourselves till three in the morning working. I don't know what other teachers are doing. I don't know what other schools are doing. I know that we are the most advanced school, probably in the city, maybe even in the state, because uh, my niece's school, they're not even doing Zoom sessions. They're just giving the students, uh, the teachers phone numbers and the students can contact them with questions and they're sending them packets. Uh, I know other city schools, they're not even doing live sessions. They're just putting small assignments up um, to have them get done. And then there's other schools that aren't doing anything at all. Yeah, Tasneem, no homework for a month, right? Um, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I have um, Ethan, my sister's school, gives them Google Classroom assignments, have weekly Google meeting sessions. Yeah, I think my father's school, it's like 15 minutes a week they do a live session. That's it, 15 minutes a week. I'm like, wow, that's a nice life right there. So everyone's experience is going to be different. Um, what I want to make sure is that you guys, two things. One, you're comfortable with your workload. Uh, two, uh, some students brought up to me mental health yesterday. So I did want to leave the floor open to anyone today that wanted to discuss mental health topics or concerns on what you guys are facing. You know, um, example, you know, I've been locked in the basement of our house for over four weeks because my wife and I tested positive. We were looking at my father-in-law who's sick uh, through a camera because we couldn't see him. Um, we would bring bleach Clorox wipes upstairs anytime we went into the kitchen to make food because we had to clean the entire kitchen to make sure we didn't pass the disease. Um, and we've had multiple people between the both of us that we know or are close to that have passed away. Um, luckily, I'm still getting paid. Uh, she is not, but now that we got the PPP funding from the government, uh, we're hoping that their payroll situation changes, right? So she stopped getting paid um, in order to pay her staff and now she can start paying herself again. So we are facing exactly what some of you guys are facing, whether it's friends or family that are sick or have passed. Um, 
the negative news on TV. Um, I'm working a hell of a lot harder from home than I did when I was in school, uh, as I'm sure you guys are. Um, and I've been locked away. And, you know, I'm trying to get fresh air by putting my head out of a window. I just started riding my bike last week uh, because we tested negative again. Thank goodness. Um, so my question to you guys is, where are you mentally? How are you guys holding up? Because that's important. Share out. What do you guys got? All right. So, Ham, hey, unmute since you uh you you broke the uh the seal. So, yeah. you're paying for college. Talk to me about that strain. Um. So you know how I reached out to you on my PO. Yes. I I didn't end up sending you um the final thing, but I followed the template you 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 showed me, and then for um. I got more money from one school after my appeal, but it still was – my dad's EFC is a lot, so it still was really expensive for college, and I ended up committing to um, Boston University. But it's Congratulations. Really okay. Um, it's, it's still really expensive, so I probably have to take out like, loans and stuff. So the good thing is – well, the good thing is you committed to a good school. The good thing is you'll probably make a good salary when you get out. The bad thing is you got to take out a loan, <clears throat> which most people do. Oddly enough, this is the best time to go to college because your loans are going to be at a very low percentage, which is huge um, based on how the economy is. So that's a good thing. Um, but again, so not being able to work to, to, to earn some money to pay for college, that's got to be stressful. Um, my I have, a, I have a gap semester, so I'm probably gonna work or volunteer or do like an internship or something during that gap semester. Good, do that. So you're not you won't be in school in the fall, so you have a semester off. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely look for an internship. Look for something to to put some money in your pocket. Also, though, um, Darren, Darren said his father had corona, wasn't doing too good the first two weeks. Okay, um, Darren, he wasn't hospitalized, right? Or was he home? No, he was at home. Okay. Um, wow. And you, the rest... He, Actually... He's okay, he's okay now? Uh, he's doing fine. He just throws up and coughs from time to time, but not as much as he used to. Okay, how long has it been? You said two weeks? It's been like two weeks. Okay, so this week he'll probably start getting shortness of breath. Uh, that happened to us. Um, okay. Contact me directly if um, anything happens or if he has any questions. And, uh, okay. and I'll get some information for you because we've been dealing with um, the coronavirus patients with uh, my wife's office for a while. So if you have okay. a direct question, I would have you guys contact me and then I will let you guys know you know, if you can't contact your doctor or they can't get through to them, then reach out to me and I'll do what I can to help you all out. All right, that goes right. Uh, thank you. Um, I've had a related, I've had a related uh, incident as well. My uh, parents, they're essential workers. They work as pharmacists, so they get really close to those patients. So there was one day where my uh, father, he got the uh, same symptoms and he decided to go for testing. After like two weeks, it's a tested positive and I and if I got it I would have died if I had it but thankfully he recovered and now he's better uh and you know that's the kind of thing that I went through oh thank goodness yeah that's you know it's not easy thank goodness you guys are all, all right ham said his brother got a couple weeks ago worst feeling ever you know when I had it um I had 103 fever I was shaking like like shaking like crazy. Like I couldn't even like, um, man, I can't even explain it. Oh, uh, the shivers and stuff. No, like not like I've had shivers, but like I was shaking, like I was getting electrocuted shaking. Yeah. I felt, I felt that before. That's what he oh. said. He said he would, he would shake like crazy and crazy chills. And then like his, he, it would be, it would be so hard to breathe. But luckily yes. he was, he was quarantined because he lives upstate because of, because he goes to college in Albany. But, he said it was it was the worst feeling, and he actually got he came to my um to my house like 
the day the day before he went to his mom's house. So then that's where he got it. So then thankfully he wasn't here when when he had the virus. But he said it was crazy. It was really bad. If you have those types of shivering and like whatever that crazy electrocution motion was, a good uh, type of substance is a valerian. It's a good uh, uh, homopathic substance you could use. Oh, text me, text me that if you can. Yeah, oh, my mom. Uh, my mom sells it. So it's good. Uh, send me, send me a message of what it is. I'll reach. I'll talk to you guys about. It, okay. All right. Thank you, Tasneem. Uh, I forgot it's Ramadan. So my 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 wife's best friend um um follows Ramadan. So she's trying to do it with her. Um, I know it's not it's not not of a, a religious thing for her. Uh, but I guess kind of just trying to be supportive in a sense. I'm not sure if that's a thing people do. Uh, but yeah, so she's been doing that also. And I, I got physically and mentally, I don't know how you do it. You can't eat until sunset, right? That's like 7.30, Tasneem? Yeah, it gets later each... Damn. Well... Listen, you you are you are all in my thoughts and prayers. I I, I wish nothing but uh, the best in health. Um, dealing with that situation. Um. Okay, so I do want to share this with you guys then, uh, before we let you guys go and, and, and run off. Um, there's been and I saw it on social media and I and I did get uh contacted yesterday actually. Um, oh. There is a movement where students across the country are trying to protest doing school assignments. So I have to share. I don't know if you guys have followed this. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if there's Facebook groups about it or whatever the heck it is. Um, but that just recently came to my attention. The students feel they're overworked. The only thing I can say to you guys, if that ever becomes a thing, is you have to communicate with your educators, but you still have a responsibility to do your work, right? Uh, everyone's got a role. Teachers still have to do what they need to do to teach, administrators, doctors, nurses, construction workers, people that work at Starbucks and Chipotle or, 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 or building, you know, ventilated, whatever people are doing. If they have a job, they're expected to work, right? Um, part of your guy's job is school. You still need assessments. You still need to held account, be held accountable for certain content. You still need to uh, graduate and go to college. You still need to be prepared to go to your next grades, whether it's freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. So my, my message to you guys would be, if you've seen this, or are thinking about this, or being, or people are trying to get you involved in this, just be careful. Because if you boycott some of your classes or assignments and you don't do them, you don't know what administration for those schools are going to do. So I can't tell you what our school's policy is gonna be. They're still hashing it out. I know I have to put in grades today. We have some students doing great, some students doing average, some students doing poorly. That's normal. Um, but if you can do the work and you're choosing not to in order to make a point, just be aware of the opportunity cost and the risk uh, that you're putting yourself in. Okay? Uh, I understand it's stressful to be home. I understand that, you know, Darren's family and, and, and Ham and, and mine and, and Ethan's and some of the rest of you have all been impacted by the virus, whether you know people who have lost jobs, whether your family members have to work so you're, take caring, you're taking care of relatives or brothers or sisters or cousins or aunts and uncles. Like we all have more responsibilities, right? So which means the stress levels are also higher. That does not mean that you should skate other responsibilities either. It just means that sometimes you have to step back and find something to put a smile on your face, right? In order to make sure that you are 
getting through the day and not overly stressed out. So maybe finding something you can do that'll put a smile on your face. Um, but at the same time, it's also trying to um, look at things through multiple lenses, right? I do this. And now it's hard, it's tough to say. I always think it can always be worse. I always look at my situation and I think there's so many people who have it worse. I'm grateful for what I have and where I'm at. I'm lucky. And to me, that kind of helps me get through certain situations or through the day when I'm having a sh uh, bad day. Right? Um, that doesn't work for everyone. You know, it's taken me decades to have that kind of mental strength to do that. Um, if you guys need anything, obviously my door is always, well, my phone is always open. I'm accessible 24 hours a day outside of classwork questions and issues, right? Um, if you have family members that get sick or you guys get sick or you have questions about a medication or something, reach out to me and I'll, I'll see if I can get you some information from my wife's office. If you can't get in touch with your own doctors, okay? Um, but in terms of other things that are happening um, within education, just be very careful in boycotting assignments because you don't know what your schools, and that goes for brothers, sisters, and you guys, are going to do with grades. So just please, I can't emphasize enough, even if you're stressed out, uh, please find a way to at least communicate with your teachers what's going on so they can give you an extension if you need one. Or um, find ways to time manage better. Or if I, like Ham said, you have all this time during the day. That's true. Some of you guys do. Some don't. Um, or, or some of you guys just might be overwhelmed with certain things. Okay. Um, so how many of you guys on a skip, how, how many of you guys are missing? How many of you guys care about prom that you're not going to have? How many of you guys does that actually bother you? Ham said it is what it is. If you're really upset about prom, can you put like a 10 in the chat window? If it's indifferent, I'd rather give like a five. And if you don't really care, put a zero. So 10 means, oh my God, I can't believe it. No, you guys are great. Zeros across the board. Um, no, it can be. And my, my message to those students is, you know, next year you won't care about prom. Right? When you're 20, you're not going to care about walking and graduation. You know, so for me, like, as, as you guys are young, please don't let that sink into your head and press you. Right, so the experience is what some people want. But how about, let me ask you guys this. Why do you go through high school? What is your goal? When you get through high school, what's the goal of high school for you personally? Um for me would be to find what I want to do for the rest of my life. Okay. To find what you want to do. Um, Mary, why do you go, what, what is your vision of high school? Like what were these four years for? What was the purpose? Um, I think for my four years of high school, it's just like a lot of growth and just finding myself as a person and, you know, obviously doing well in my classes to get to, to get into college. Good. Now see, what else? Give me one more person. Amar? Let me get something out of you, Amar. Let me pull your teeth. Tell me why, what was high school for you? What's the purpose of it? Uh, high school was like a way to find my career path. Perfect. The one thing you guys didn't say was high school was in order for me to go to prom. A high school was a place for me to, you know, you know, you guys have made friends, and I understand that not seeing them for a couple months might be difficult, but none of you are saying, I went to high school because I wanted to walk in graduation. None of you are saying, I, I went to high school because I wanted to go to prom and party. That's not the responses you gave me. Your responses were, find myself. Your responses were, to find my career. Your responses were, to mature. Your responses were, to find out what college you want to go to. None of that has anything to do with prom. None of that 
has anything to do with being in your house for two or three months so that your family is safe. None of that. I, what I'm trying to say is I got some messages that some students are, are, are really upset about not going to prom. And some students are really upset about not being able to go outside and hang out with their friends and go to parties. My, my message to you guys off of that, separately, not even as a teacher, not even talking to you as a teacher. I'm talking to you as peers, as adults. We have adult conversations about finance. We have adult conversations about economics. We're going to have adult conversation about this. If your goal was never, I can't wait to go to high school so I can go to prom, then I'd like for you guys to switch your perspective if you can and try to care less. I know it's hard to say and hard to do maybe, but like try to care less about prom. It was never the reason you went to high school anyway. It's a cool perk, like playing in a soccer game, right? Or like we had our basketball game, our, our student faculty basketball game. Well, we can't do that. We were going to do the boxing match that uh, Daniel has been working on for four months with, with Rockable, right? And Nate and Subban and whoever else was involved. And now we're not doing that, right? Those things that you guys put in work and these things aren't happening. What I don't want is for that to impact you emotionally. Because if you harp on those things, you will find yourselves in a deep funk that you cannot pull yourself out of. What you need to focus on is what you are getting out of this. Your family's safe. Um, you're, you have time to learn more. You have time to do more. Um, you know, maybe there aren't a whole lot of perks, but I think the downside of not going out with your friends and, you know, you know, not being able to go to Starbucks with your boyfriends or girlfriends and things like that. I don't want that to detrimentally impact you guys emotionally. All right. Like Ham said, his family's healthy. They can eat every day. You know, there are some schools, there's schools in Ecuador that they are reopening next week. Full students, full classes, full students. And they don't have the healthcare system we have. So imagine what happens to them next. So there's, I'm not saying that, you know, it can always be, I mean, cause it can always be a little bit more difficult, but for you guys as 17 year old adults, what I don't want you to do is get caught in a difficult situation where you're starting to focus on the wrong things that make you more of a negative person. Negativity breeds negativity. All right. Find something positive. We can have a zoo. You guys want to have a prom? Yo, check this out. You guys want to have a VE prom? I will no doubt host a big Zoom meeting and we can get dolled up and see how we look. 100% I'm so down. I haven't put on a shirt and tie. I have a brand new suit that I haven't even been able to wear. Right? Party time. I'll bring, I'll bring the coffee and uh, the donuts. Hold on, Mary. Your friends in Korea are partying on Zoom or they're partying together in crowds? Oh, my goodness. Raving? <clears throat> Is that legal? <laughs> that doesn't sound safe right now. Oh, boy. <clears throat> so, but again, like I, I, my goal here right now is just to communicate with you guys that I, I don't want you to focus on the bad that you're missing out on things. Okay. There is so much more to come that you won't care about what happened in high school. All right. Um, is anybody here like really like emotionally you're like just drained? How many of you guys are sleeping more? I'm sleeping. I'm not sleeping more, but I'm definitely like lounging more. It sucks. Like lethargic. Like I'm inside right now. My lights are dim and I'm looking out the window like, oh my God, it's sunny. Sleeping less, Darren. Man, you got that much work? 
12 hour naps? Tasneem, I don't even, oh my God. Ham, you gained weight? Man, you can't even put on a suit. Maybe we can't do this virtual prom. Ham's going to show up to prom in sweatpants and a sweatshirt anyway now. Okay, so, um, Mary, you got a new pet? You got a dog? A Venus flytrap. That sounds crazy. I love it. It's good because now it can eat yeah. bugs around you. <laughs> Yeah, so Prasanga, that's interesting. Wait, Mary, you named your Venus flytrap Henry? That's amazing. So Prasanga, yeah, dude. So solitary confinement. Like, that's what people go through in, in I don't know, jail, right? Apartments they go through like that? Yeah, they, they try to break you. But, I mean, come on, let's be honest, guys. We're not in solitary confinement. You can go sit on your stoop. I can't imagine solitary confinement. I, I, would, love it. I would love for people to leave me alone. Oh my God, Sam! <laughs> social distancing, social distancing is the best. Whatever it's just so fucking weird. Those are caterpillars. Wait, what happened? Who's that? Oh, I missed something. I think that was Serena. Oh. <laughs> Tasneem likes being alone with her couch. That sounds great. Oh, wait, hold on. I, I misread that. Like being alone with my family sounds much... Oh, yeah, much worse. <laughs> so Serena Tasneem wants to be in solitary confinement, too. Um, so, but again, you know, I just think that for you guys, even though we say these things, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's some days I wake up and I'm like, yo, I just want to go see my parents. I want to go see my nephew. I had to drop off things to my parents' house yesterday, like uh, Clorox wipes. I couldn't even see my nephew. Because my brother doesn't want me touching my nephew because I was sick a month ago. And I understand it. So it's like, it's just like those types of things, they can impact someone emotionally. What I don't want you guys to do is harp on that. I understand it's not personal. I got upset at first and it annoyed me. But, you know, there are things that we all have to shoulder and deal with. What I want is for you guys to be able to deal with that if that makes sense. And some of that is mentally just telling yourself over and over that it's not as bad as you think it is, or something that is happening isn't important. Like telling yourself walking graduation isn't important. It's not. I'll be real with you. Nobody cares about you graduating high school. They care about you graduating college, right? They care about you getting a good job. You're supposed to graduate high school. So if you can, if you can kind of compartmentalize that, yeah, high school is just the next step. It's a stepping stone. Like right now, Mary, do you care that you graduated, that you had an eighth grade graduation? Eighth grade graduation. Do you care? Watch, Mary's going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, definitely. But like, you guys don't care about your eighth grade graduation. And in two years, you're not going to care about your high school graduation. So if you let that like internalize and upset you, your middle school, right? Guys, do you know I was late to my college graduation? I was late to my college graduation. My God, that happened to me too. Because we were supposed to wear like a suit, like a formal attire. And I decided to wear sweatpants and shorts. Wait, wait, you were late to your college graduation. How old are you, Ethan? Uh, no, my eighth grade. <laughs> So, but like, <clears throat> I just want you like perspective. If you guys can step back and put that kind of stuff in perspective. Um, Mary said your cousin had to isolate from her parents because she works in the hospital. So that's what um, Laura, my wife and I did. She runs a doctor's office in Manhattan where the outbreak started in Washington Heights. Her doctor got tested twice, got sick twice. She tested, got sick. I got sick. We've locked ourselves downstairs. We haven't seen the rest of the family. So it, it, it's difficult for a lot of people. And then look at the ER doctor. Did you guys see the ER doctor that killed herself two weeks ago? No. Yeah, she, 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 mentally it just drained her because she saw so many people dying. 
too sensitive. No, I mean, listen, when your job is to save people's yeah. lives and you can't, and you can't do it, it, it takes a toll. That's different yeah. than like, oh, I can't go to prom and being sensitive. Like okay. I kind of put those in different categories. You know, it's heartbreaking. And then still- Darren, here comes Darren. You guys see what Darren just wrote? The murder oh. hornets. Now we oh, have- yeah, 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 I saw those. Now we have murdering hornets. That's great. We, that's all we need is murdering. What is more, what? This year sucks. You know, I'm closing my windows forever. Just use air conditioning. But wait, my air conditioner broke. There you go. Get a fan. Yeah, what Mother is, Nature. What hey, God is how about how cool? Time out. How dope is it what's happening in the world, though, outside of Mother Nature? Like, did you see that in, in Florida? There's, there's like huge dolphins that like huge um, cl- clusters of dolphins that are now swimming again. Finally. Right? There's animals on the road. There's like, there's like turkeys on the road. Like what? Where the, where the hell do turkeys come from? Because like there's the old zones. It's so crazy. I think that's amazing. I tell you what, the best time to travel and go see nature is going to be right now when this thing starts to, to lift up because you're going to be able to see things like imagine going yeah it has named pigeons think we're extinct so um again uh, i'm gonna let you guys go i just wanted to there, there is a movement of students protesting and not submitting work be careful getting caught up uh, again be careful you don't know what happens with yourselves and your grades so please be cautious um if you need anything, you guys definitely reach out to me. Um, um, but outside of that, just please try to try to see every time you think something negative, try to find a positive. Um, uh, a lot of religious conspiracies. Oh, guys, did you just see the breaking news? No. We work. So remember we said SoftBank? was buying a percentage of WeWork in the school year. We talked about WeWork going bankrupt, right? And yeah. losing all that money. SoftBank just came out and said they are not going through with the deal. And now WeWork is trying to sue SoftBank. Wow, say goodbye to WeWork, guys. It's Audi. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. If you need me, if you need me, uh, reach out to me. Okay, don't hesitate. If you need anything, reach out to me. Um, and again, as, as, as the days go on and, and, and things get tougher, if you need me, let me know if you need extensions. I need to be communicated with if the workload is too much. Um, this is being moved to Friday. We have no class Wednesday. See you guys Thursday. Um, and again, um, I'm glad most of you guys are happy and healthy. All right. If, if you're going through things, uh, it's definitely on a case by case basis. If you need something school wise, communicate with myself, other teachers, or your counselors. Um, if you're fo- if you're focusing on the wrong things right? Such as not being able to go outside or go to a party for, you know, a couple months. I, I, I challenge you guys to try to find um, a way to twist those negative thoughts around. Okay. I, I, I do challenge that. Um, and we'll see if I can help. If you guys need some other ideas of how to do that, please, I, I'm more than happy to do that. Right. I'm more than happy. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely more than happy to do that. If you guys need help with time management because teachers are giving you a whole boatload of work, happy with that too. Right. There's great technology tools you can use for that. Um, but if you need me, you got me. Um, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Please, you should pretty much be done by Thursday and fine tuning Friday. So bring your presentations if you're finished. Let's actually look at them uh, if we can, since we only looked at like one or two of them. All right. And uh, we'll put Tasneem in charge of planning our virtual prom. All right. Ham, get your sweatpants ready. (laughs) Sweatpants and a tie. 
guys, have a good day. Go outside, take like a 10-minute walk, wrap yourselves up in bubble wrap, uh, get some fresh air, and uh, put a smile on your face, and then go back inside, finish your project. All right, I'll see you guys later.